welcome back to this series where we're taking a look at various AWS topics as they relate to the AWS Cloud Practitioner Certification. Now today we're going to take a brief look at containers in AWS and messaging. So starting off with containers, I've already covered Docker and containers in a separate video in more detail, but a quick summary right now. A container is a bit like a food container you might order from Uber Eats. So just like with that container, all of your food and all of the sources and everything is within that single container and it's portable. So you can take it to work, you can eat it in the park, whatever you want. But in the same way, a container in the context that we're talking about is a package that contains your app and all of its dependencies that it needs to run. And the key advantage of using containers is that they use fewer resources than traditional virtual machines. Now a client can have hundreds of containers and in some cases millions, like every single Google search runs in its own container. So Google is running millions of containers every single minute. Now to manage all of those containers, you need something called an orchestrator. So you can think of this like the guy waving a stick around at an orchestra. Now with AWS, there are two options to choose from. There is ECS and EKS. Now for the purposes of this exam, you don't really need to know much more than that. All you really need to know is that ECS and EKS are orchestrators for containers. As for what these acronyms stand for, ECS is your Elastic Container Service and EKS is your Elastic Kubernetes Service. So ECS has more connections with other AWS services, but EKS uses Kubernetes. So if you already have an implementation in Kubernetes, the migration from your on-premises to the cloud is a lot easier. You can basically just lift and shift. But if you don't have EKS and you're building a new product with a bunch of AWS services, ECS is probably preferable. Probably preferable. Probably preferable. That's a tongue twister. Say that 10 times. Probably, probably preferable. Now related to containers is something called AWS Fargate. Now Fargate is one of AWS's serverless services. Now, Fargate is a service that lets you run serverless containers on ECS or EKS, paying for only the resources you use. Now serverless in this context means AWS takes care of all the configuration for you. Now normally you would be configuring the instance type if you were hosting it on an EC2 instance. You'd have to configure the auto scaling and everything else involved with it. But with Fargate, AWS takes care of all of that for you. Now, another advantage with Fargate is that you're only paying while a container is running. Now, if you were running your containers on a manually configured EC2 instance, you would be paying by the hour. But if you were using Fargate, then you'd be paying by the millisecond. Now, the general advice is to use a manual configuration if you're using a consistent workload. So if you have containers running consistently and to use Fargate if you have a start-stop workload. For example, if Google Search was hosted on AWS, they might use Fargate because the containers for Google Search are very short-lived. Now, obviously Google isn't hosting their stuff on AWS, but it works as an example. Now, moving on to messaging, there are two messaging services on AWS. There's SQS and SNS. Now, SNS stands for Simple Notification Service and it's an internal messaging system that notifies you when something happens. Now, the way it works is you can set up various topics and and then you can set AWS resources to publish notifications to those topics and then people subscribe to those topics would then get the notification. So you can think of it like a YouTube subscription. So if a given EC2 instance fails, it uploads a notification to its channel and then that channel notifies everyone that subscribed to it that something has happened to the instance. So in this way, you can have different teams that are subscribed to the topics that relate to them. And then if something goes wrong, they can be quickly notified. Now you can set up SNS to push notifications to given topics using various triggers. And the notifications themselves can come via an SMS message to a phone or an email or anything similar. That brings us on to SQS or Simple Queue Service. Now SQS is generally used as a messaging service between software components. So if you think of the software components like workers in a factory, SQS would be Bob leaving a message for Bill in a queue. And then Bill would be able to take the messages out of the queue one at a time and process them. Then going back for more. But unlike SNS, there are no topics involved. There's no subscription involved. It's one software component creating a queue of messages for another software component to process. Now putting this into a practical example, SQS is your queue and your worker is probably going to be an EC2 machine. Now the contents of the queue could be anything. For example, it could be a sales order in JSON or it could be a link to an S3 object that the worker then needs to turn into a thumbnail. But whatever it is, the worker EC2 machine is going to pull messages from the queue, process them one at a time and then go back for more until they're all finished. That's all we're covering for this one. Quick summary of your acronyms. We had ECS, EKS, so those are your two orchestrators for containers. And then we had SQS and SNS, which are your two messaging systems that are provided by AWS. In the next video, we're going to take a look at the physical global infrastructure that lets AWS exist, which is something you're going to need to know for the exam. Until then, I hope this was useful and have a wonderful rest of your day.